morning. Welcome once again to working. It is very dark and I'm sure the image is not great on the camera right now, probably very noisy, but I am on my way to pour a footing. So this is getting kind of complicated here, but if you guys watched the multiple episodes where we were setting up and pouring the gigantic foundation, the one that had the 11 foot high walls that were 12 inches thick, back at that job there's a detached garage that we're working on now so they were able to do some backfill and now we're pouring a footing for the garage and also a porch there have been some complications sometimes things happen when you are working for a customer and I don't want to get too involved but basically there is a basement slab that we were supposed to pour as well and the homeowner who is also operating as the general contractor for this job was out of town and he wanted us to get the slab and the footings for the garage and the porch board at the same time. He said the slab would be ready for us. We're not setting up the slab. They were supposed to do all the plumbing and the insulation under the slab and the wire mesh and all that stuff. We came on a Monday to set the footings. The slab wasn't ready yet. We got the footings done and inspected on a Wednesday, and that's when we were supposed to pour the footings and the slab. The slab still wasn't ready. The person was out of town. It's tough getting concrete all the time. It's just always hard to get a truck. We decided since the slab wasn't ready, we were going to go ahead and try to pour the footing. It's a Friday today and we would just truck pour the footing without a pump using a wheel, wheelbarrow. More labor for us, but we thought it would save him some money. And then what ended up happening, and, and we were only able to get one truck too, by the way, because the concrete company is very busy. They said they could send us one truck at seven in the morning, which is why I'm here driving at 6.15 going towards the job. Anyway, so we had the one truck, we were going to pour the footings with the truck and not with the pump. The customer returned from his trip. He managed to get the slab done. And he called me yesterday and said, well, I want to do the slab with the footing. He said, okay, well, we didn't think you were going to have it finished. But even if you had had it finished, we weren't able to get enough concrete trucks to do the slab with the footing. So we figured we might as well get the footing done. He called me back later. <clears throat> and said that he called the concrete company and that they might be able to send us two more trucks at 11 or 12 o'clock. Now this is a faux pas. You don't go behind your subcontractor's back, call the concrete company, try to schedule some trucks, and then tell your subcontractor that they need to show up and pour that. Strike one, that's a faux pas. Second, we are starting work at 6.30 this morning. If we started trying to pour a hard trowel basement slab starting at 11 or even 12 o'clock noon, we would be working easily until seven or eight o'clock tonight. So that would be over a 12 hour day. Now, sometimes we've done that if it's necessary, but in this instance, it was kind of overreaching and we weren't super happy about this. Basically, I think that where we are right now is we are still just pouring the footing. The guy said he was still gonna try to get the trucks, and my dad told him that if he got the trucks, that's fine, but we're not pouring it. So, some toes were stepped on, some lines were crossed. I'm still gonna be friendly, I'm still gonna be nice. We're gonna work on this footing this morning. Um, I don't think we're even gonna set screeds or get the slab ready today because as far as we're concerned and as far as we know, if we are still gonna be pouring the slab, we're not gonna be pouring it until maybe Tuesday of next week. So anyway, <laughs> some interesting stuff going on. Sometimes these things happen, um, but we'll work through it. We have got footing here for the porch fairly straightforward we should be able to get the truck to pull right along here and get a chute in there most of the way so we probably won't have to wheel too much of that and then we have got 
this footing for the detached garage and those boxes in the back there. The site looks a lot different now. I don't know if you can see it too well with how dark it is, but it's so much nicer with everything backfilled. They put in this nice fill, compacted it all. So we're not getting up to our shins in mud the whole time. Look at this thing. Well, I'm looking at this slab too, and it's not right. It looks like there isn't anywhere near enough space there. They've only got like an inch over the top of that insulation over there. So that's not right at all. We couldn't afford it today anyway. And here's the footing. So we're gonna have to pull the truck in. We'll back him up to there. We'll get a chute inside and we'll be just using a wheelbarrow, wheeling all of this. It's gonna take a little while, but it shouldn't be too bad. We've got about seven yards coming. And there you go. I'm gonna go look at the slab because I don't think it's right at all. They've got like an inch and a half of concrete here. So yeah, we couldn't have poured this anyway. down there up to the garage and we'll just wheel you into there. Yeah, straight back. It's kind of steep. Good. Looking good. Yeah, he's all right there, I think. Sliding. Yikes, that's kind of scary. I know. That's a little creepy. this little porch up there we were gonna have you just drive up you two and we'll put your chute in but I think as long as we can get your chute in we'll wheel off as much as we can then maybe we can reposition you so maybe if you come back a little further that's probably good for now We'll get three in, I think. Maybe do those first. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want them too. Well, let's do dry in those first. Get out of the wire so that one isn't actually all tied up. Just throw it in. Ugh, my gloves are soaking wet and freezing cold.
The site's better than it was anyway, but. Uh, I remember coming here when I had to pour down that driveway with a pump, and I spilled a bunch of mud all over that. Yep, it was pretty steep. It's still pretty steep, but slightly better. A little better. But yeah, when I saw the front wheel, I'm like, well, yeah, I was going to say, it's get out of the way. Because if I slide back, I know it'll stop. <laughs> I know. Stuff to do. Probably hit that pile, it would stop eventually. Yeah, we'll keep you dry for these boxes, then we can wet you up pretty good. You need help? You should be able to get that. Yeah, two of those aren't tied up there at all. So. Okay. Could have been a little drier. Too bad. They're not tied together. I might not add any water even for the main footing because we do have a couple spots that are a little high. I think that's enough. But... get one truck in the morning here to pour the slab but I'm looking at it now and it's not ready there's like an inch of slab in some spots where they put the foam down in that corner especially there's like no concrete it's like barely an inch over there there's only a couple inches so I don't know if he knows that they also put the mesh down without putting any of the steel that has to go inside of those interior footings. Yeah. I know it's not your guys's yeah. thing, but well, that and I seen they put foam where the footings go. It's like you're not, yeah, yeah no. you don't do that. <laughs> no. And I don't know if he was gonna have. I thought he was gonna have you dig some more out of that corner and like regrade and stuff, but maybe he's just gonna have his own guys do that. He thinks it's ready, but obviously it's not. So yeah. I don't think you're gonna get a machine in there to pull anything out. Maybe they'll just have to hand dig it, but. Yeah. Are you guys basically done for now? Well, yeah, we're just, yeah, basically. Okay. Can you get it right in the corner at all or? I can take some loads too when you get tired. That's good.
basically going to be this for a while. <laughs> Takes a little while to wheelbarrow for it. Putting like this, but it's kind of our only option right now. And ordinarily, we would have used a pump, but we were trying to save the guys some money by not using a pump since we weren't going to do the slab at the same time. So it'll just be a lot of loads in the wheelbarrow. Do the side shimmy. to see if we can get <laughs> over to the other one. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'll pull out and I'll come in here first here. I don't think this guy's going to have to move his drop, but okay. if he does move it, Yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to yet. It's still pretty soft, but you can try. Right, so that went well so far. Poured out the majority of the mud we had. We had seven yards in total for this, uh, for this footing and then the other little porch footing up above. But now we have to see if we can get the truck to maneuver into where we need him to be. All of this is a lot more complicated because we're not using a pump, but hopefully with all the weight off him, or most of the weight off of him, he should be able to get up there so we can wheel that porch. We shall see.
Everything's going to go in the ditch. So he's going to try to turn around. We're going to see what happens here. If he can make this corner, that's the question. I probably don't want to be standing here either in case he rolls over. He's gonna make it. It's looking pretty good. Don't go forward anymore. Okay. That's looking good. Good job. You got it. I had to rearrange some. Uh, you started sliding so much the, on that well, shit. The over sliding there. was that was the difference, honestly. If I had been a little further back, I don't think yeah. I would have cut the corner. So. We're here now, though. We got it. You guys want that other truck on there still? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we might be able to truck pour some of it. We'll see. Yeah, I think we might as well. I mean, I can bring it back all the way to the edge here. Like, yeah, let's just, we'll put the other chute on. We'll just get you far back, see where we get you in. Uh, it's pretty good. We'll just shovel. Why we never put the chute here? What's that? Maybe just back it up. Uh, I don't think he's going to get any further back. I think we'll just shovel him out. I'm getting most there by itself anyway. Flattering you. easier.
I'll just fill up the wheelbarrow for that section there. If you just want to give us one more wheelbarrow full, I think we got it. Probably enough. Let me just dump it and we'll see. I think we're good. All right. done just need to straighten some of the uprights they standing up now uh, what was that oh okay On Monday. I need a new mag. Look at this thing. It just constantly does this. It happened very shortly after I first got it, too, and I couldn't get a bolt in there to fix it. You said it's a little shallow. Oh, sure, yeah. I think they're going to have to yank most of that mesh out. They're going to have to yank most of the foam out and they're going to have to regrade a lot of it. Yeah. Um, it didn't look like they snapped any lines on the side to show, you know, to give them, give themselves an idea of the depth. But basically we're up to the top of the wall back there and there's literally like an inch, inch and a half maybe with the foam. Even up against that one, there's only a couple inches, well, maybe three. You want a good four. A lot of this place, the mesh is gonna be above the level of the slab as well. Like, oh, you can yeah. see where it is. Um, but here, yeah, there's like nothing. Gotcha. Over here, it's too shallow there. They need to get the foam out of there. They need to put mats of steel. They need to put transverse steel. Around here, they're close. It looks like it's a little off because I thought we were, they were only going to go three inches above this. Oh, above that footing. Here. Above the footing, and the mat, the mats pretty or the uh, foam is right at the top, so they probably want to be an inch below that yeah. footing. So I just nobody was here to tell them what to do i guess and no. so they just kind of did what they did no they were here yesterday doing it i had, I had no idea who they were <laughs> yeah. but we'll be back monday to strip our footings anyway so monday, okay. yeah have weekend. you too
<sighs> well, there you go. They're not all crazy 12 hour days where you have to break your back and get stressed out getting the job done. This was an easy one. It's only nine o'clock right now. <laughs> so I was here from about six, six o'clock, 6.20 to about nine. I have to make some phone calls. I have to go look at a couple jobs and stuff. So the day isn't totally over. But as far as the actual labor part, it's pretty much over. Uh, went pretty smoothly. Sorry, went pretty smoothly. It's a little squirrely getting the truck in there to a couple of the spots, but everything went great. We had enough mud. And now I guess we're gonna come back on Monday. We'll be stripping those forms. I don't know if I'm gonna have you with me at that time, and then we'll figure out what's going on with this slab. There's a lot of stuff with with the owner and all the various subcontractors and I don't know, we'll see what happens, but that's for another day. For now, still got a little bit left. If you're just finishing a long, hard day of work yourself, have an ice cold bottle of chocolate milk for me, preferably Twinbrook Creamery, the best chocolate milk there is. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you later.